This video is about repairing the inverter board in a CCFL computer monitor. CCFL stands for cold cathode fluorescent lamps. These were used as backlight illumination in the early days of flat screen monitors. Around the year 2011, LEDs showed up and completely supplanted and replaced CCFL backlights. But before the advent of LED backlights, CCFL monitors were everywhere. This is what CCFL backlights look like. This is a group of three of them. They are long, thin glass tubes. They are similar to the fluorescent lamps you might see in the ceiling of an office or a kitchen, but they are miniaturized. They are driven by high voltage AC current and they contain mercury, which is a dangerous heavy metal. Like all fluorescent lamps, they have a limited lifespan. They degrade slowly over time and eventually they will stop working. However, they can last for many years before failing. This circuit board is an inverter. This device provides the current to power the CCFL backlights. It's called an inverter because it converts DC current to AC current. 20 volts DC comes in on this pin. The 20 volts DC is converted to 20 volts AC. These little rectangular devices are transformers. They convert the 20 volts AC to around 1000 volts AC. The 1000 volts AC is then output on these connectors directly to the CCFL backlights. There is a sensing circuit which measures the current draw of the CCFL backlights. If the current is too high or too low, the circuit will shut down the backlights. A failure of either the backlights or the inverter will trigger the shutdown. Fortunately, I have several of these monitors so I can swap parts to localize the failure. In this case, I localized the failure to the inverter board. Now, the ViewSonic VP2130B monitor has this type of inverter board. It's, it is a separate inverter board. More commonly, you will see something like this. This board is a combination of power supply and inverter, all in one board. This side of the board is power supply. This side is inverter. On this board, we have two transformers here and here. And each one of these transformers drives two CCFL bulbs, and those connect here and here, and here and here. The monitor that these backlights come out of is a ViewSonic VP2130B. These were manufactured between 2005 and 2008. Just turn it on here, have a look at it. Just have a test pattern going here. Here's a ViewSonic 2130B monitor from the back. The back has been removed, exposing the electronics. I've taken some uh, backlights that I removed from a different monitor and I've hooked them up to the inverter board so you can see what that looks like. We'll turn it on. It's going to be very bright. Yes, very bright. And the lights come on and they stay on as they should. Now I have replaced the good inverter board with a defective inverter board and we will power it up and we'll see what happens. Back lights come on and then they go right back out again. So the protection circuit sensed that something was wrong. Now if we look closely at these three backlights, we will see that one of them does not illuminate properly. Now we turn the one out. It's hard to see, but this light over here on the far left did not actually illuminate. It, unfortunately, the camera is sort of blinded by the light. But the light on the far left did not turn on, and the other two did. If we trace the wiring back, each light has its own transformer. Now, that particular light was powered by this transformer, so we know that that's the bad transformer. Now, it so happens that I have three of these bad inverter boards. Now, each board has one bad transformer. So I decided I was going to use one as a sacrificial board and pull transformers from it and transplant them to the other two boards so I could make two, two good boards out of three bad ones. Now, I've already started the process. This is the sacrificial board here. You know, I removed a transformer from here and I transplanted it into here. Okay, so... This board is labeled bad, but this board is, has actually been fixed. This one is going to be fixed next. I'm going to remove 
this bad transformer and I'm going to replace it with one of these and hopefully I'll make this one good as well. Incidentally, I also remove those capacitors. And by the way, that's another thing which frequently fails in these old electronics are these capacitors. Another thing to watch out for. Any capacitor made between 1999 and 2007 will have a much higher probability of failure. When they fail, typically the top of the capacitor will sort of dome. It will, it will, it will elevate up, form like a dome shape. That's because there's pressure building up inside of the capacitors. Now, this was part of a historical event called the capacitor plague, the bad capacitor plague. And you can, and there's plenty of that written on the internet. But anyway, in this case, the capacitors are all good. I can see that there's no swelling in any of these capacitors. If you have a piece of consumer electronics that has failed that is older than 2008, the first thing you should look at are the electrolytic capacitors. However, in this case, we know that it's the transformers. Now, do we have an easy way to test these transformers? Well, yeah, we do. It's a transformer, so there's only two lines in and two lines out. But now it has six pins on one side and two pins on the other. The input, as it turns out, is this pin and this pin. The output is this pin and this pin. If you look on the underside, you can actually see the wires. You can see the two, those are the two input wires there and there. And the output is a wire here and there's a wire there. So if the coils are intact, we should measure continuity. And we're, going to, we're going to check the, the input coil. We have continuity, pretty much as zero ohms. And we will measure the output coil. And we measure no continuity. Okay, so it's open. In this transformer, the input coil it has continuity, but the output coil is open. I mean, if it was going to fail, that's what you would expect. The output coil is actually much longer and thinner than the input coil. So let's measure them in circuit. So I'm going to measure a good one. So here's the input coil, this pin and this pin, and we have continuity. Okay, now the output coil is this pin and this pin. We have continuity measuring 760 ohms. Now the resistance on the output coil, of course, is much higher because this this wire is much longer and thinner. Okay, now let's try this transformer. Okay, the input shows continuity. The output is open. This circuit is open, so we know that this one is bad. So you, you can test these in circuit. You know, look for continuity in, in the input and the output coils. The tricky part is figuring out which pins are which, and you just look at it, it is not obvious. In this particular case, that pin and that pin are the input. There's six pins along here. This one over here, which is partially covered under this piece of black plastic, that's pin two of the output coil. Now, one thing which should be obvious, in order to remove one of these transformers and transplant it to another board, does require soldering and desoldering skills. So obviously you shouldn't even attempt this if you don't have those skills, and going through it is beyond the scope of this video although there's plenty of material online to tell you how to solder and desolder. Now, obviously, my situation is a bit unusual in that I have several of these monitors and also happen to have three of these boards, which are bad. Therefore, I can use one as a sacrificial source of transformers in order to fix the other two. Chances are you only have one monitor, and so even if you do have a bad inverter board with a bad transformer, where are you going to get another transformer? That's a difficult question. These transformers have this part number stamped on them, STI8TR00043. Now, if you enter that into a Google search, you find absolutely nothing. I was able to find a part called SPI8TR00036. And this is the Google search I made, followed by the word transformer. And I did get some hits there. Pictures of it look the same as the 4.3 version. I do not know if ATR0036 is interchangeable with ATR0043. This vendor apparently has them for sale at a price of 
0.66 euros. This vendor is located in Poland. At 36, that's the actual Polish currency, which I think is called a zloty. But in euros, it's 7.66. Going through this list, the vendors of this part are all located in difficult to reach places like Poland, Ukraine, and even Russia. I don't see any of these for sale anywhere in North America. You might have better luck on eBay just looking to replace the entire board. There's currently two of them for sale on eBay. These pop up on eBay from time to time. My goodness, this one is $72. Gosh, the monitor itself probably isn't worth that much. And here's one from 30 for $38, but it comes from China. Goodness, even if you got it, it would probably take many weeks to get it. But anyway, so replacement boards are occasionally available on eBay. So in summary, we went over the technology of CCFL backlights and the inverters that drive them. And one of the failures that they suffer is these transformers on the inverter board and we went over how to troubleshoot those basically look for an open circuit now whatever monitor you happen to be working on your inverter might have a different part number maybe something you can find and purchase or perhaps you have a couple of monitors with problems and you can sacrifice one of your inverter boards for parts in any event these are old monitors no doubt if you're having a backlight problem Perhaps the best solution in the long run is to simply replace the backlights altogether with LEDs, and I have done that too. But that is a lot more work, and it requires that you take the entire monitor apart, and it's very easy to, to break something in the process of doing that. If you just want to replace or fix an inverter board, that's a much easier fix. Okay, thanks for watching.